Welcome to my library, dear guest. My name is Ko, and I will be your storyteller. Now, you have probably noticed a few things here are different. I shall explain. A few of you may have wondered where I have been. I have discussed how to become a better host for all of you who find your way here. And through an exchange with like-minded individuals, I have come to the conclusion that perhaps contributing more to the story than just my voice may just amuse a few more of you. You see, it becomes a little lonely here, and my only real company are guests like you who come and leave, which is why I wish to make your stay as pleasant as possible. Though I ask of you that you give me more time to prepare accordingly, with the plants I currently have, I may only be able to open my library once or twice a week. I hope you understand. Rest assured, though, I am convinced you will have a better time with me here. That all being said, let us get to today's story. The Elf with No Emotion Volume 1 By the author Judge Dredd a few years ago, I had recently moved to a new state and had just started to settle in. I have met a girl who soon became my girlfriend. She has mentioned she really liked D&D and had played before. I had played once a few years prior, but didn't have much experience, so I was itching to play. Thankfully, the local tabletop gaming store had people running campaigns, so my girlfriend and I decided to join. I rolled up a half-orc paladin of conquest, who had been betrayed by his commanding officer for being a half-orc. He has been rescued by some clerics, whom he swore allegiance to. My girlfriend rolled up an elf mage who didn't have a backstory. Well, she didn't until the DM questioned her about it during the first session. It came down to, experiment went wrong and now I have no emotions. This was mainly an excuse to not roleplay emotions, as she wasn't comfortable with that, apparently. No issue with that, really. Some people don't like to act out their characters. So, the first issue occurred when we were stuck in a keep that had nobles outside. We were trying to formulate a battle plan. Me and the two other players, not GF. I had suggested a basic military plan one that my character would have used in the past due to his background. Out of nowhere, GF says, Would your character be able to think that up? I'm confused, as are the others. I ask what she means, and she states that my intelligence score is an 8. Below average, to be sure, but by no means stupid. That, combined with his soldier background, means this basic plan should be easy to come up with for him. I told her this, and we moved on. Unfortunately, this happened two more times as we progressed. I assume she thought since her character had a 17 in intelligence, she should know better than the rest of us, but I don't know. Just because your character lacks point in a certain stat doesn't mean that they're bad at everything associated with it. In my opinion, a bad stat is not meant to cripple you, but to make things interesting. You cannot be good at everything, so bad stats mix it up and make you come up with different plans. Take me as an example. I am small and not exactly of strong stature. A few books in my library are rather heavy, and I would surely not be able to carry them. However, I can always move them as needed using Mage Hand. A problem that would usually require strength was solved in another way, and I may even be able to do this more efficiently than somebody who is stronger than me. Just as in this story, while our protagonist may, by stats, not be as intelligent as his girlfriend, Given the circumstances, in this case his background, he is able to solve that problem. Really, in the end, it all comes down to how you roleplay and your roles themselves. Cut to the session before we broke up. Spoilers, we broke up. And she quit. 
we were tasked with clearing out a hot spring resort. Kobolds had infested the place for some reason. After some initial fighting, we managed to capture one. I managed to interrogate it a little for some information. Dragon egg plus hot springs plus kobolds equals bad. Before I could ask it some more questions, my girlfriend decided that, despite being a lawful good mage and the kobold being tied up and weaponless, she should firebolt it. Her excuse is that kobolds are evil, so saith the monster manual according to her, and should be purged. So the kobold is now dead and we are annoyed at her actions. She says, it's what my character would do. And we drop it and move on. She and I break up before the next session, so she quits. Turns out the kobolds have been ousted from their old den by Knowles, and were now being controlled by a dragonborn. They had no idea what the fuck was going on. I do not believe I need to get into how foolish and overdone the excuse of it's what my character would do is. Of course, there may be some actions your character may take that you, as the player, know aren't the smartest way to go about things. However, it should not be an excuse for you, as the player, wanting to do something detrimental to the group. The fact that kobolds are evil according to the monster manual is irrelevant. Every Dungeons & Dragons book, including the Player's Handbook, the Dungeon Master's Guide, and the Monster Manual are simply guidelines. Nothing is set in stone and the DM can always make changes as they see fit. We are not done quite yet, however. The Elf with No Emotion Volume 2 this is a sequel to my previous post that covers the two other incidents with my then, and now ex, girlfriend and her D&D character. Incident 1 This takes place a month or two after the last story. By this time, Kay, my then girlfriend, and I have broken up and she is now with a new guy, DM. Seeing as Kay and I were part of the same friend group, I asked that we try to keep it friendly between each other so we didn't break up the group, cause unneeded drama, or force one of us to leave. Unfortunately, it didn't go this route thanks to Kay's actions, which somewhat bled into the game. DM, Kay's new boyfriend, who is a very chill dude, offered to run a Pathfinder game for our group. Everyone who wanted to join was invited. This led our party to be around seven people. Way too much in my opinion, but DM was optimistic. Seeing as this was a more casual game, we skipped backstories for the most part and went off rule of cool for a lot of things. Those who read my last post can probably guess that Kay isn't a big fan of the rule of cool. That's fine until it becomes a constant issue. Two of the other players were playing a duo, think Farah and Tor from Mortal Kombat, I hope I said that right, and they wanted to make a bunch of Molotovs. Kay groaned about this a little, but DM allowed it. Later, the duo wanted to tie a bunch of them together to make a big Molotov bomb. Idiotic? Definitely. Dangerous? For sure. Cool as hell? You know it. Q more complaints from K. Thankfully, DM still allowed it, despite her death glare. K didn't just complain about the rule of cool stuff either. She had decided to play the exact same character as last time, the emotionless high elf mage, but nixed the backstory, or what little there was. She once again had the highest intelligence of all of us, and once again believed that made her the smartest compared to us idiots, and that she was now the de facto leader too. Unfortunately for her, she wasn't, much to her anger. Funnily enough, I ended up being the leader. 
Although mostly in spirit, as I was just making sure we follow plot hooks after we had time to goof off. But, since my character was a drunk, a drunken master monk, and everyone else had lower intelligence than Kay, any plan or suggestion would be shot down or argued over for no reason. Doesn't matter if it was sound or if everyone else agreed on it because it was fun, she'd argue over it. Sadly, the campaign was cut short not too long in, for many reasons. But at least there was no more of Kay's shit. Incident 2 Another one of the guys in the front group decided to run a Wrath and Glory, Warhammer 40k campaign as it had just released. It was me, DM from last campaign, and two others. It was going well for a few sessions, but then more people in the friend group took interest in and wanted to join. New DM mistakenly said yes, he acknowledges this was a mistake, and we gained more people again. We went from 4 to 7, and then K caught wind. Before the campaign started, I had asked the new DM if I could play an orc. He said no, as we were playing an Imperium campaign. And the Imperium hates Xenos. Oh well, next time. Well, apparently K didn't have to abide by that and got to play an Eldar. A space high elf. What a surprise. As I am not all that familiar with Warhammer 40k, I had to look up what the problem here was. Xenos is, from what I got, an umbrella term for all alien races, which seems to be pretty much everything that is not human, including orcs and the aforementioned Eldar. This time around, K had been convinced by her boyfriend to try and roleplay a bit rather than using the I have no emotions, cop out, like the last two times. Sweet, roleplay is great, new to it or not. So what do you, fair reader, suppose her character acted like? If you guessed a pretentious snob who immediately insulted the party for being dumb monkey, <laughs> Eldar insult for humans, then you are right. Despite being hired to work with us by a human who has the authority to destroy any planet he chooses, Kay starts off hostile. This was her character. She replaced no emotion with being an asshole. But as per tradition with our friend group, the campaign was cut short. At least I didn't and haven't had to deal with Kay in D&D since. Only her increasing hostility to me IRL. Well, that was quite... something. I cannot think of anything to add here that you are not already aware of. So I will say nothing except that playing by the rule of cool is probably the best and most fun way to play. Again, the rules are guidelines. If you want to make a paladin who can use Divine Smite with their fist, I'd say go for it. Just do speak about it with your DM first, obviously. That would be it for today's story. Before you leave my library, I would please ask you to tell me if you enjoyed this, say, new style of hosting you. I need to know so that I can make your future visits more pleasant. With all that being said, I hope you enjoyed your stay and that I will see you again soon, for there are always more stories to be shared.